Well, they're, they're trying to kick us out of the cabin. While I was away yesterday, a group of people from the town showed up unannounced, trespassed, um, no former contact whatsoever, and just started pretty much accosting Allie. Told her everything she's doing is illegal. This entire situation is illegal. They said we're living here full time. It's a full time residence and that we need a septic, a well, all these permits, all this kind of stuff. As you know, if you've watched these videos, you know that none of that is true. We do not live here full time. We have the house we just bought. Never have said I lived here full time. The geese, the geese are leaving. They're heading south. It's a camp. It's fully off grid. The town does not maintain the road. There's no electricity run here. It's, it, it's not a viable residence. It can't even be considered a residence. Apparently, I don't know, they're sending a bunch of paperwork and we're gonna have, to, I, I don't know what to do. This property, unfortunately, has been nothing but a headache. This property has caused me more stress in the last five years than anything else in my life. And I love it. I love this place. I do have a special connection to it, but I can't deal with this anymore. I, the biggest thing is that we don't need two places. We don't need two cabins. Our house is, is a cabin. It's an A-frame cabin. And, you know, they're not that far from each other. It just, I don't need to be paying. The, the goal was originally to turn this into an Airbnb. That's why I bought it back in 2018. I was, I wanted a property close to home that I could always have and I was gonna Airbnb it and it just didn't happen like that. And then I didn't really wanna go so over the top but my friends got involved and basically everybody got to practice their crafts here. Mason got to really do some cool stuff, uh, spiffing the place up aesthetically. John got to practice his driveway skills and building stone walls up there. Allie learned so much about building and gardening here. I learned so much about building here. Mao is Mao's oh, twenty feet up. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he did it. He finally went too high. Good. That was the coolest thing he's ever done. <laughs> it's been huge for Mao too. He learned about the outdoors here. It's just been a giant learning experience. And one thing that unfortunately it still has not been is an escape. Um a place where you come to unwind and unpack and get away from it all. There has been beautiful days. There have been pockets and periods where this feels like what it was intended to be. But it just always comes back to there's more that needs to be done. This has to get built. This has to get cleaned up. This has to get fixed. And then big things like this happen with the town. It's heartbreaking. When Allie called me yesterday and said that the way that these people berated Allie. They wouldn't let her speak. They wouldn't listen to a word she said. You know, she explained we're not living here and they just like wouldn't hear it. They couldn't, They apparently they watch these videos. There's people on the town boards that just for some reason or another have a vendetta towards me and this property. It's weird to obsess because this is in the middle of nowhere. We are, there's nothing close by. I mean, we're alone, out here, away from everything, minding on our, our own business. And furthermore, we're like, I grew up down the river, not far, and I love this land. I'm a nature lover, you know, I like, we have nothing but love for this land. We're not polluting anything. We're not making, you know, we're not causing any harm. We just set up a beautiful little sustainable place here. I don't really know what the path forward is, but I, I cannot afford the time, energy, and money to hire an engineer, build a well, build a septic. That's not what this place is supposed to be. I can't do that. And if that's the only option they're trying to give me, I don't know what to do. The biggest thing is that I feel so torn between the house and here. I want one property that I can put all of my energy and my whole heart into. And the place that makes sense is the house. That's our base camp. That's a place where we have dependable utilities, where we can work, where we still have 
rivers nearby woods space to do things where we can have a real garden with actual sun coverage where we can raise chickens and animals we want that so bad we can't do that here i want to put everything into the house i know so many of you would be so sad to see me sell this cabin and i would be sad too but if you felt what i felt over the five years of owning this you wouldn't even second think it. I feel guilty. I don't need two properties. This is too much. I don't, I don't need this place. It's nice to have, but it, it would make so much more sense if it was far away or in a different state in an actual escape that we could drive to. It's just crazy to have two right next to each other. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And it, you know, I didn't know life was gonna work out this way. I had no idea. I bought this when I lived in an apartment in town and it actually made sense as an escape. I'm just learning as I go, and I can't afford to put any more money into this place. And I don't want it to just sit here and rot. They, they said they're gonna board the place up. The town people said, I don't know their timeline or how any of this is gonna work. That's crazy. If they would come here and just hurt the structure with nails and stuff, that's crazy. I, I can't possibly imagine how that's legal. Also, I, I can't imagine how it's legal to just trespass on someone's property and just show up. I mean, what if Allie and I were naked or, you know, this is private property. You can't just walk on. And the town has done this over and over and over again. They just, they'll just show up and walk right in. They don't ask, they don't call ahead. They have no courtesy or respect. But all that said, this is a magnificent property. And I think that for the right person that doesn't have the history I have with it, that has the time and money to, to deal with the town and do whatever needs to be done. If you did have to jump through their hoops, someone with time and money could make this an unbelievable retreat. So I'm not saying that I'm selling it or doing anything fast right away, but I'm going to put an email in the description of this video. And if you want to send me an offer on the property, um, go, go for it. When you email me, I can give you a lot more details, but it's seven and a half acres. It's got the brand new driveway. It's like a 400 foot driveway with the turnaround. It has that trailer up there. That's actually in decent shape, but you could redo that could be a guest house. It has the crazy stone walls that were built. It's got the river splitting the property right in half. The structure is spotless. It's super solid. It's got the off-grid garden set up. We've got plantings everywhere, blueberry bushes, raspberry bushes, apple tree, peach tree. Have the shed platform, the, the green shed. I mean, it's set up. This is, this is no joke. It would have to probably be like a cash deal sold as is. Serious inquiries only. Don't bother lowballing or anything. I mean, the the land and the driveway alone are worth over a hundred grand and you know what the structure's like it's gorgeous and I you could include the appliances I could include the battery banks there's thousands and thousands of dollars of extras that that could be thrown in me and Allie have this conversation all the time it's like what what's the point what is the cabin we have a house now like what we we got to the point we wanted to be at we wanted a, a house with good sun coverage with privacy with space to do everything we wanted to do and now what's the cabin for you it's like you feel like you have to use it just because you have it but i i don't need to have it i would rather give it to someone who can give it all the love and care that it needs and not have that on my plate i don't need to be paying taxes and putting sinking more money into building things and and dealing with the stress. The stress will kill you. I have so much other stuff on my plate with work and all my vehicles and the house. I mean, the house needs unbelievable amounts of work, the new house. And by selling this place, Allie and I could both pay off our debts. We could get the new roof on the house and we could reside it, do all the work that needs to be done. It would change our lives to sell this place, not only from a stress standpoint, but from a financial standpoint. So I hope you understand where we're coming from. If you've enjoyed watching this process it's only going to continue the story's not going anywhere there's so much cool stuff we're going to be doing at the house i have so many ideas and that property you know i can sink my heart and soul into that and not have second thoughts and i can do everything the right way not have to get into any weird situations with the town so that's the goal i mean i'm going to appeal this thing if if that's possible because their entire basis for kicking us out is is an assumption and it's wrong. I know so many people would be like, don't let them do that, stay and fight. And it's just, you gotta know when to pick your battles. This isn't, it doesn't make sense for me. It's not worth it. I had to just make this video 
I had to just get this out, update you. It's a huge deal. I don't want you to think Trout and Coffee is gonna change forever or anything is gonna happen drastic and fast. I've got a awesome fall planned. It's gonna be an incredible autumn. Also, just thank you guys so much for tuning in for tuning in in general, for supporting, for supporting on Patreon, for buying the coffee, the merch, all of it. The, you guys have been tuning in like crazy lately and it just, it helps me so much. It, and it's motivational. It makes me excited to keep creating and to keep sharing. And it's just me filming all of these, editing. It's a lot of work and uh, you guys make it worth it. It's gonna be a very hectic few months. It always is every year. This stretch of time is like nonstop, not a single day off. So I'm gearing up for that. And other than that, I mean, it's crazy because life has been going so good. I've been the happiest and most excited I've been in a long time. I just feel so good. It's, I'm learning so much with Mason. I'm keeping my, my videos, that work balanced somehow. It's very challenging, but I'm doing it. I just feel on top of everything. It's one of the best places I've ever been. And then of course, when life goes really good, the scales must be balanced. This happens. So, Allie's, Allie was very upset. I mean, I can't believe she had to deal with that alone. That. Oh man. <laughs> I felt really bad for her. Right. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> He's crazy. How do you feel about this whole situation? I'm bummed out, like to the extreme, because I wanted to enjoy this place and further the skills I've been learning and. I always told Kyle at first I had a little bit of a problem connecting with everything because it was all so new to me. This wasn't mine, none of it, the land, the structure. And slowly I feel like I completely transformed as a person. I learned how to build. I built a garden, started a business, and slowly my heart, my soul, everything became so attached to this land. and. The thing that helps me navigate this is just knowing that our house, the A-frame cabin, is going to be this all over again, but in a more feasible way. Everything will be done bigger and better, honestly. I can't wait to just take every lesson that was learned here and maximize it and do it all right at the house and continue the journey with the same or similar goals and lifestyle and everything happens as it should and you should just surrender sometimes and not fight the flow of life because this place has been stressful in a lot of ways so it's important to feel emotions and embrace them but also equally important to keep your chin up and move forward when life throws curveballs. Well said. <laughs> it's an opportunity. One door closes, another opens. Imagine how it would feel to be completely out of debt and to be upgrading the house and only have one thing to focus on. I know, seriously. And maybe Mal will get a little sister eventually. <laughs> we can do a real homestead at the house and that's that's what's gonna make us happiest. You gotta do what makes you happy, no matter what other people think, what other people say. You gotta know what you wanna do in your heart and soul and chase it. That's what life's about. Mm -hmm.